99.999% of the deep seabed is unexplored. In an age of global warming, biodiversity loss and a rapidly changing planet, this begs the question, how can we protect what we don't know? Despite having been exploring the deep sea since the 50s, we've observed less than 0.001% of our global deep sea floor, yet we use this to make assumptions and, perhaps more concerningly, train machine learning models on the global ocean. Now, if we based our assumptions about the terrestrial world on observations of 0.001% of the total area, that would be an area smaller than the size of London. What's more, not only is our observed area small, it's riddled with bias. In the 67 years we've been diving to the deep sea, less than 20% of dives have been in the high seas, i.e. the areas of the ocean beyond jurisdiction of any one nation, with the rest focusing in exclusive economic zones, those coastal areas where the bordering state has special rights over the use of marine resources. And of these 35,000 dives, more than two-thirds were within the waters of just three high-income countries, the US, Japan and New Zealand, and 90 95% were within 200 nautical miles of high or upper middle income countries. If we're only training climate models on data from the most affluent countries, how can we expect these same models to reflect a global ocean and, in particular, accurately represent lower income countries who are most at risk from climate change? Since 66% of the Earth's surface is deep ocean, it's clear we need to make use of advancing technologies such as autonomous vehicles and identify targeted spots to fill significant gaps. We'll see issues such as these addressed at the United Nations Ocean Conference this June as it's more important than ever that we feed science into policy and make efforts to build a more representative and less biased impression of our planet's deep sea floor.